All right, let's stick with dark mode because it's easier on the eyes for many people. All right, so uh, let's start from uh, the groups from the top. So group A, um, let's just say like that. Uh, the fact that B-Boys were complete... reason what happened here was that the B-Boys were... Uh, completely did not play any map before the match. And they just withdraw before the tournament. And this really sucks. Because they... Like the whole group was scheduled around them so they can play. So that's why it was happening earlier in the day. And they, they in the end, they did not show up. That is such a shit look, honestly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then... Basically, Alternate did go at the top as expected. However, Gravity did show up a pretty solid fight. Gravity is Marsley and uh, Jan. Uh, so that is the tip. Yeah, because the thing is, B-Boys is a good team though. They just completely just do not train. They're like a bit weaker Trident. Uh, there are many teams, honestly, that uh, if they had trains, then uh, there could have been some decent matches, but yeah. Also, another map 7 backflip. It's, it's actually crazy how often this happens. Map 7 backflip. Map 7 backflip. Map 7 backflip. Uh, what's happened here? Okay, here's Age last map. That's a bit different, but... Do we have any other maps? Sevens? Here there was a different map. Yeah, there was G-Force, but right here again. Backflip again. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, basically here, alternates. Uh, Scandir and Vossile goes through as top seeds. This is one of the rare groups where the actual top seed went through as the top seed, which was very rare. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Gravity just stomped over Utopi. There was actually a hilarious situation where uh, Utopi's match was a bit late because uh, Darkwix was uh, partying or something too hard. And he, due to this group being so a bit earlier in the day, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least he managed to wake up on time. But uh, yeah, they got pretty stomped. They did not even get, yeah, they barely reached like 10 points in the match. Uh, but yeah, in the end, Alternate got a stop seed, Gravity a second seed. And. Um, that's that group. All right, then we had group C. Uh, so Antic did get a map. So Antic had a very similar situation where they just really just checked out the maps like day beforehand, basically. Uh, they still got a map on Edge, but what happened there was uh, Sprout didn't uh, was okay. So to give an idea, Antic was checking out the maps like day before, and Sprout was learning in the match. <laughs> That's that's literally the way how this uh, map got won, but in the end uh, they had Sprout like had like practice like six or seven maps, so yeah, basically this uh, match was a fast learn uh, match honestly. Uh, then GXP last chance qualifier team, uh, last chance qualifier number two team actually. Yeah, 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 yeah that's what happened. Honestly. Bit of shame that, uh, you know. Okay, I will probably talk about this, but uh, uh, about but after we're gonna do a recap, but then I'll talk about what's the implications of some teams not showing up prepared and stuff like that. Alright, so basically, yeah, uh, here Sprout's very similar situation happened here, uh, where Sprout did go as upper seed. GXP was very, very close, it was a very close match, a lot of back and forths. Uh, happened in the matches. Basically, everyone their own picks, and then, yeah, let's just say like that. Uh, Sprout warmed up and learned Edge on uh, Edge on Antics map, and then uh, start to get more used to the map here. Uh, but yeah, Team Rex was also kind of okay-ish, especially here. They start to step up, and a bit of a sad thing. I don't know if you saw on Twitter. Uh, oh no, okay, this is a bit different team, but. Uh, yeah, Omega and Dionysus were uh, not playing that great, but uh, it was pretty alright. Uh, but uh, we'll see what uh, kind of... They played alright, and nothing too special, but um, yeah, GXP was uh, just a bit preferred. And I feel like the fact that they did have those additional LCQ matches just gave them an upper edge. And with that, Sprout got the upper seeds, and GXP went through as number 2. Then we had Group D, so what happened here is that Easy Dream uh, did not play due to... 
uh, Coco breaking his uh, arm. Uh, sorry, breaking his fingers like uh, like before that did, while playing a handball, I believe it was. So uh, they he went to the doctor to see if he can play and stuff like that, and uh, like he's in the recovery process early on so that's why he just he tried to figure out ways to play the game and stuff like that but it was not possible and as easy dream does not have a substitute as they could not form a full roster that's why easy dream uh, uh got uh, automatically eliminated sadly oh but this could have been a fun match though like easy dream trident would have been a pretty fun game and i feel like this grouping then with that could have gone way more, way more uh, fun uh than it was at least very cool match was happened here was um, Trident definitely showed what they can do on some of the maps. Uh, before uh, before matches started, uh, Trident was super nervous to play, <laughs> like super super nervous, and you could see that earlier on the first map especially because they were like very nervous and they made like very very weird mistakes. And then on tubes they kind of got a bit more in their comfort zone in, during the last few rounds. And then they start to bit step up. Like uh, the fact that 12 vote on age is crazy, and the last few maps, well, they did lost, they were still pretty close. Also, J Swag was crazy good on tubes as well. Like maybe peak pace. I mean, peak pace wise, he was also pretty good. Because uh, he, I believe, had the fourth fastest time uh, during matches altogether on tubes done in a match. Uh, but his regu on tubes was crazy. Like that's the insane parts because tubes in my opinion is the hardest map to be regu at and he only had one mistake and that was not even on the identity uh, so that was awesome uh, but yeah soon very good feed played really really good uh, nr was pretty all right as well uh, but um, actually in the stats bmqs from yep team was really really carrying the team i really like how bmqs played bm like but the Simon was just way too mud. Uh, currently in the stats, Simon sadly is the worst player in all of the wild cards. Uh, but BMQS was uh, doing pretty, pretty good. I really hope that uh, NCSA, maybe for next year or something like that, they can get a bit more logical teams get being formed. Because right now, many teams in NCSA was a good player and a weak player. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, Simon had a very similar rating as Tomers uh, from Splits. Like, I believe it was very, very close, but uh, Simon was sadly on the same level there. Yeah. But yeah, in the end, Trident uh, just uh, rolled through. Yep, team in the end. BMQS was playing good, and it all basically became. This match became. Uh, how can I say it? Between basically Simon and Baywack. Baywack just performed better, and in the end, Trident got a 4 0 from the lower seeds. All right, Group E. Foot just stomped way through Chamuru Nichinde. Uh, then in the end, uh, BPP went through Kukumek, and then Kukumek went through Chamuru Nichinde. Very, very straightforward round one matches. Uh, Foot was very, very shaky. However, Paco was amazing. His time on GeForce, holy, that's a crazy run. He like I even <laughs> after the matches ends. Uh, Paco played really, really good. Paco was super good. And then the consistency from Lego on the other side. Like you had this cool balance with a really, really peak based player who was very solid. And you have this like consistency based player on the side with Lego. And uh, yeah, very, very good performance from BPP. I would say BPP is uh, very, very similar as Raptors, the way how they played. Uh, they played really, really solid, and uh, BPP is going to be a cool team to look out for for qualification matches, and maybe even further as well. But yeah, Birdie, Chemko, uh, let's just say it wasn't their regional form. Um, let's just say it like that. And yeah, Kukumek was alright. In Kukumek was a, is a solid team on paper as well. Uh, Vulnera Hydra, but um, yeah, like. Uh, didn't happen this year. All right, then we had Group G. Group G kind of did happen. This was the most straightforward group, and it basically went as expected. Um, yeah, Airwalkers just stomped DXA. Uh, Robbers uh, stomped Osurf, and then Osurf stomped DXA. <laughs> uh, very similar pattern here, you know. Um, but yeah, then it, this was, in my opinion, 
one of the best matches we had in wildcard so far. A uh, bit of shame these two teams were in the same group, but that's, you know, that's the way how uh, the draft did end up. Very cool that uh, Osserv got a match, and this is the match that I wanted to talk about. Uh, Jean René made a, a Twitter post that he will be stopping competitive TM side of things. And this was like his last official match. And um, yeah, this map pack and like the maps in general from this year, due to the quantity of them and difficulty of them, unless you just live and breathe Trackmania, it's, it's uh, you know, very, very hard to, you know, practice and prepare and stuff like that. Also here, uh, Stutz has also, as he mentioned here, he also then tweeted that he was playing with, with COVID, so I feel like that was one of the things that does impact their performance a bit. But yeah, in the end, they still played really, really good, even against a server, Jean René was playing good as well. Uh, Nick Sobi was okay, but uh, yeah, Airwalker just uh, was on a bit different level. And those are kind of the main recap of the groups, and afterwards, uh, we had the draw. So the draw ends the like... Uh, let's actually do like this. Because this was the information panel I showed. To the teams. Uh, I really hope you can see this on stream. Okay, I need to... I'll switch different display capture. I'll go to full full display. Uh, so basically... Uh, this was uh, the draft. So uh, there was the alternate attack so early on. This was uh, Sprout. Uh, oops, <laughs> actually I click on it. Let's put it like this. So this was Sprout. So these two teams were based off the global point standings they had racked up during the year. Uh, then this one is Molotov. Uh, this is Raptors. Uh, this is BPP. Uh, we did later during the draft, so it's basically so the teams have easier time to pick uh, who to play against. This is Robbers on this side. Uh, this is Gravity. Uh, this is GXP. Trident. I'll kind of go over some of the main stuff. Uh, what happened here and what what were like the main things. How did the drafts ended up like this? Also to give a bit of insight on uh, on why maybe might some teams might have played and how it worked also behind the scenes and uh, you know. First, let me finish this off. And Airwalkers here. Okay, so uh, this is basically the way how draft worked. Is that the teams from pool 1, which were all of the upper seed teams from matches right here. Every single team that won their group were placed in a pool 1. And then based off their global points ratings, uh, basically the points they have collected throughout the year. Determine the order in which they decide who they play against. Um, uh, that's why Alternate picked first, Sprout picked second, Soon was next, then Molotov, then Raptors, then BPP, then Shift, then Robbers. Reason why Robbers is at zero points, because they came from last chance qualifier and they have zero points, so they were the last uh, pick team to decide on who they play against. Uh, also there was a criteria that in the draft, uh, teams cannot pick the same team they already played in their group. So, uh, there couldn't be, like, a conflict, uh, in the qualification matches as well. Uh, but yeah, basically then the pool two teams were Gravity, GXP, Trident, Exalti, Frites, Foot, UrxGP, Numelops, and Airwalkers. So those are kind of the pool teams that there were. Before we started the draft, there were two already pseudo-fixed times of the day when the matches do happen. Uh, one of them was Trident. A uh, Trident match would then have to be done like earlier in the day or uh, because New Zealand time. Because uh, there is 11 hour difference. Uh, between, uh, let's just say, Central European time and New Zealand time. So so the Trident players can play at the proper time of day for them. And they don't have to play against something ridiculous like it's 3 or 4 in the morning. Uh, and in the end, they had basically, whoever team picked Trident have to play earlier in the day. Uh, and the second thing was also XLT. XLT had requested that their match is played a bit later in the Sunday. So that's why their match is played at a bit later in the day compared to the rest of the teams. So those are kind of the main metrics of players picked. So alternate then picked first foot. My guess is probably they saw how foot was playing and that's why they picked them. And uh, I feel like still like for a lot of these teams, 
main reasons who they decided first they probably went for after non-european teams and then probably just went to whatever they saw who played good or not but yeah basically alternate first picked foots uh then sprout was second sprout picked trident and uh, it was Dexter who picked Trident, so Scrappy was not present within the drafts. So uh, <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, the, I think Scrappy's comment on Twitter kind of speaks for itself because the guy did not expect that his match will be played uh, earlier in the day, let's just say like that. Uh, but yeah, basically, then Sun picked Frites. So Frites is the Rask and uh, Max Rack. That was the team that did upset Hime or the Million Motus. Uh, this team uh, did manage to beat them in the lower qualification match. Uh, so that's how they did end up in pool two. So I guess a very notable, uh, I'll just say upsets. One of the one of the upset teams I would say so far. Uh, but uh, so that was the team that Sun picked. Then the next on the list was Molotov. Molotov was actually number four seed in terms of picks. Um, Mainly because they were very consistent second places throughout all of the year, plus, uh, you know, MM. While many other teams who are down the list only play just one stage or something like that. And that's why they did not rank up that many points. Rask, Maxtrap, full train, that's awesome. I really hope this... I think if Rask and Maxtrap pop off, this is going to be a really fun game. I really hope that uh, that might be the case. Uh, sadly, I think this match is going to be pretty one-sided. Unless Chemko and Birdie really, really full train this weekend. But it's uh it's very very highly favored in an alternate attacks. This match is gonna be fun as well, because uh, uh, let's just say the peak of Trident is uh, gonna be pretty good as well. But yeah, Molotov GXP gonna be fun match. Uh, these two teams are I would say any team basically either Molotov or GXP whoever makes main event it's already a pretty crazy storyline. Team that no one was expecting in the last chance qualifiers goes through last chance then goes through their group. And now it's in the qualification match. And on top of that, they're playing against one of the biggest, uh, like, uh, craziest underdog runs we had in the tournament. Where Molotov beat Exalty, got through top of their group, and were one of the picking teams. And uh, we, there's this very, very cool matchup. So, I really, uh, actually very awesome to see that there's going to be, you know, one of these crazy underdog teams uh, uh, playing already in the main event. It just depends on who, which one. Either Middle East Africa number 2 team or Last Chance Qualifier number 2 team. Alright, then the next match is BPP, Pick Team Gravity. BPP is Pussy Topako and Lego. And Gravity is Marsley and Jan. Uh, Jan was one of the better German players from the regionals uh, during, uh, during especially Stage 2. And uh, at the same time, BPP was one of the best teams from Stage 2. Uh, I'll, honestly, I feel like this match will highly depend on how well pre prepared Gravity is. Because uh, I think Marsley played really, really good in the group stages. Jan was a bit shakier end. Uh, but uh, I think uh, both of these teams and these teams have very good draws against each other. Like, I, I think I, Gravity probably sees BPP as a good draw. And Molotov GXP, like, see Gravity as there. But the main thing here is Gravity doesn't have that much experience in high, high, high level play. Compared to BPP, which is, uh, you know, just uh, really, really... Upwards, but this is gonna be a fun game as well. All right, shift and airwalkers. Shift did came from upper sides, but uh, the thing with shift is they actually did not want to play, so they just forfeit their match already. And uh, it's honestly a bit sad that that happened. But due to that, now we know that airwalkers is the first team that goes out of the groups. Airwalkers being uh, Stuffs and Vizzy. Uh, honestly, a bit of shame that it ended up like this. But uh, then I guess on bright side is that their walkers can have proper time to you now prepare for the middle stage now properly. Uh, then the next one is robbers. Uh, we'll playing against our GP Numelops. And uh, this is basically last chance qualifier number one team. How many maps did they drop actually during? So robbers have not lost a single game in wildcard. They went map lossless in... Um, in uh, last chance qualifier where they won every everyone with drop without dropping a single map and uh, and then they beat went through airwalkers as well for two and now they're playing against orcs gp numelops orcs gp numelops was not playing that well so this can be potentially a fun match if orcs gp numelops puts proper effort in and robbers same case uh robbers has a pause which was the best player in all of wildcard this year 
Uh, so I guess that's a very, uh, not this year, but uh, in this wildcard stage altogether. So that's kind of one of the main things there. On, in the end also, Raptors, which is the last match, uh, uh, in the end pick Exalty, and I think this is also going to be a very, very close game. Like, this match will highly, highly depend on Link. If Link is not ready, yeah, it's not going to be that great. Because uh, Raptors, both Energize and Shiny are very, both are solids. They don't really have a massive standout player. Like some matches you have Energize popping off, some matches you have Shinimi. So it's a very, very balanced team compared to XLT, where it's more like Miquatro and the match results really, really depends on Link. Uh, so that's kind of my thing. Maybe you have noticed that we went in a bit different order because of the scheduling. Uh, so what happened here is that actually in terms of picks, so all of these teams picked each other basically. And in the end, we had only these two teams left. So when shift had to basically end, they, since you can't play against a team from your group, uh, they were by default given airwalkers. And that's why there is like this uh, like cross formation in terms of picks at the end. Because uh, one of the group conflict scenarios actually did happen and, uh, and that's why, you know, group stages ended up like this. But yeah, and now we'll see how it will go. My guess is that, okay, my head says Sprout, but my heart says Trident here. That's for sure. Uh, this will probably be alternate attacks. Probably soon will go through. We need to have this speed redemption arc. <laughs> uh, oh, this is gonna be, oh, it's so hard. I want both teams to make it. It's so, it's so bad. I really want to bit lean on Molotov's side because these guys have been trying to prove themselves for an entire year because they were always overshadowed by Foots in the regionals and they have both Huso and Ignite as players have risen so much during the year as well. And I feel like we are a very very similar match as right here where like Raptors like Energy Shanimi are both our solids. And you have like Mikwato who is insane. It's like a very mirror match in that sense with this one. Like this match really relies on Henkan. Where Beratos is really popping off. But uh, Molotov are both. Uh, however Molotov is more like Huso is way more pacier than Ignite. But Ignite is very solid. Because Ignite is literally Mikwato. The way how they played in their matches that is. But yeah, we'll see how it will happen. Huso can be really, really fast on some maps. At the same time, oh, it, it's gonna, oh, it's such a, it can go anyway. It's gonna be an awesome match. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, BVP Gravity, I'm personally thinking BVP will lean on, but uh, it really depends on the preparation for Yan and Marsley. Uh, but uh, it can go either way as well, but it's more like 60-40 for BVP for right now. Especially because BVP has been playing really good as well. Especially puts it to Paco. Like his time on um, his time on GeForce is just crazy. Remember people were like freaking out that Huso was doing uh where is GeForce? That like Huso was uh, did like a point seven. That was oh that was crazy. And then like Paco popping off uh you know Paco popping up. Jan as well did a good time as well in the match. But yeah, Paco did a point two, which is just ridiculous. But yeah, Jan as well did a point four. So it's gonna be an awesome game. Jan Marsley can do some decent times there as well. Yeah, shit, uh, rockers, we sadly do know the outcome. Robber's Orcship in Umalops, it really depends on how prepared is Orcship in Umalops. And Raptors, XLT, I'm personally a bit leaning on Raptors, but this really... If Link steps up and trains, uh, not like trains his Regu a bit, and becomes way more consistent, then XLT maybe can take it. But Raptors was good. They were good on most maps, I remember, in, uh, in their group. It's a bit now hard to like fuzzy to remember, and like, because this was the very, very first... 
uh, Raptors and Frictus were the very very first group where they were played. But I think the fact that if they have seen the times where they have played, because uh, they have they were very first to play and they can see all lines times from other teams, and um, I think that will allow them to even elevate their game even more. I feel like with that. I bumped my. <laughs> Sorry, I bumped my monitor cable, so that's why it's freaking out like this. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, sometimes when I bump my uh, cable, it just like flicks through some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ah, but yeah, that's uh, the main stuff. And then uh, afterwards, we'll have to see how then the World Championship main event draft will go. Where uh, these teams, oh yeah, this is, oh yeah, this is very nicely already put, I like this. So it already shows which are potential teams that might make it, which is nice. Yeah, this is also updated. Why Netherlands, Stuft's guy. But yeah, after he boards here, there's gonna be another draft uh, with all these teams. Where first the top global points teams will do their first picks. There has been a small change in the way how picks are being done uh, for the first group stages. So the top seeds right here decide the first team that they play against. Uh, the other uh, top seed from the other TMGL or the top global point standing teams. And then they decide their third team. And then the first team from this list that they picked will decide the last team that's in their group. So that's the way how it will go. There, during this week, there will be a rulebook update uh, for the World Championship, where some of the rules will be a bit clarified, and some will be removed. For example, the safe line rule. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, there will be a rulebook update uh, during the week. Uh, I'll probably create a change log regarding it as well. So um, people then know what's being changed when it's going to be updated before the qualification matches and onwards. At least for the main event. If it's not going to be present for the qualification matches, then at least for the main event. So, uh, or like this part of the event, it's set in stone. So, so there will be that. Yeah, the problem is, it, there's actually, it goes even deeper than that. Since I feel like I'm the only person who has read the rulebook, there's even a worse uh, situation that can happen. In theory, if a team gets a warning or penalty at least three times, then the team has to get fined. <laughs> which is a leftover from the Rainbow Six rulebook. Because in Rainbow Six, they have a lot of uh, fines. Uh, if uh, for penalties and stuff like that. Uh, that's a Ubisoft license thing. Yeah, yeah. Like the fines are pretty large as well. Uh, Rainbow Six rule. Okay. We can go over this. So this is the Rainbow Six rulebook. And there's some, there's a lot of similarities here, if you see. Um, but yeah, let me show you them. So there is a moment where it's also from sportsmanship rules. Uh, but then there are the fines and it <laughs> and in the sportsmanship rules it links to fines page in the rainbow six one uh, Oh, yeah, there's this one. So for example, if you do mess up then you these are penalties and fines uh, that you need to pay then uh, at least in rainbow six That's the thing <laughs> And in theory basically if you get a warning and then you have you know Yeah, and then, uh, for example, in theory, the way how the rulebook is worded, in theory, after you get two warnings, you have to, you know, 
1k and match forfeit. Has to be a thing. And this is a thing that needs to be fixed. But yeah, there's even bigger ones. There's like even 10k fines and stuff like that. But that's uh, in Rainbow Six at least. That's why it's super important for competitors to read the rulebook. Because uh, with their participations days, you know. That is not so much for the players, but it's more for the license holders. Uh, can't be awesome. Because in the Rainbow Six, the way how it works... Uh, we'll go to the Trackmania page. They have a... You know how on TMGL there's like eight partner teams, right? So in Rainbow Six, for example, uh, there is a partner league for every single region. So there's a partner league for Europe, partner league for North NA, partner league for Brazil, partner league for Japan, partner league for South Korea, partner league for MENA, partner league for Oceania, partner league for South SEA. South Asia is a bit different, and there's a partner league for LATAM. So they have like uh, 10 leagues like that. And then, um, for example, let's take Europe as an example. So then they, uh, you know, if there is a breach of like that, then, you know, it's like that. So that's kind of one of the things that's kind of stuck around from that rule set. And, uh, yeah. It's kind of funny that some of these regions could not even exist in Trackmania because there's genuinely no players to play competitively there. Like South Korea could not exist as a region in Trackmania. Japan could not exist as a region. South Asia actually could exist. Southeast Asia maybe as well, Oceania maybe, Mina, mm, not kinda, and Latam also kinda, Brazil.